A Party Retirement by Cameron Scott W. Naramore. When Frederick stepped out of the Cadillac, he gasped in shock and then immediately grinned with immense pride to see the long line of cars in the valet lane. He had always seen his grandpa as the man who usually was in his favorite rocking chair on the porch, whittling away on some wooden trinket while watching the sunset. Grandpa spoke only if someone said something to him, and with words so light they would evaporate in the air just beyond where they were meant to be heard. Frederick seemed to be the only one who would rock beside him without forcing him to talk. His children couldn't stand silence, thinking it to mean he wanted to be left alone which was likely true if the alternative was forced conversation. A few times after rocking together in silence, his grandpa would pause from his whittling to say something, unprompted, and as Frederick admired the gleaming parked parade, he recalled one of those occasions. You know, Freddy boy, not all wood carves the same. Some of them are as hard as hell, and others they cut like clay he said as he lifted a wooden bird to catch the last golden rays of the sun. But if you listen to the wood, they all end up just as beautiful. Seeing all these cars, it hit Frederick hard that he only knew one facet of his grandfather. Now, Frederick, listen, his father said as he bent down and tugged at his collar to set it flat. You know you were only invited because the party is happening a month before your 13th birthday. Because this is not a party for children. But we both know that you're mature enough to be here, so just make sure that everyone else sees that, yeah? He said with a nudge under Frederick's chin. Y y yes, sir, replied Frederick with a quick nod. His father had a knack for saying things in a way that was difficult to dispute. So agreeing with his words felt natural to Frederick. Good boy. So let's go inside now and find Grandpa, and try not to be so nervous. I know how you get. His father flashed a reassuring smile and put an arm around his shoulder as they walked in. Frederick tried to take a deep breath without letting his shoulders rise. With his attention on the other cars and his father, Frederick took little notice of the building until he was inside. The expansive banquet hall was the largest room he'd ever been in. The gymnasium at his school was a distant second. Round tables filled much of the rectangular space, each with six chairs and place settings, and long buffet tables decorated with silver chafing dishes were positioned against both the longer rooms of the wall. At the far end of the room was a rectangular table with seven chairs on only one side so that the occupants would be facing the rest of the room. In front of that middle seat sat a microphone in a stand. A bright orange banner with Farewell Marty in silver lettering hung above the table. The room was mostly empty when Frederick and his father entered with the exception of his grandpa standing behind the distant table, talking to the only other people in the room. By the time they made it near the table, the room was bustling and enthusiastic chatter and of greetings and pleasantries filled the cavernous space. People were filing through doors along the wall, doors that Frederick didn't see until the trains of people started entering between him and his grandpa. His father was behind him, waving at people as they greeted him while still casually ushering his son to his seat. With a bit of weaving through the growing crowd, they finally made it to the table. Sit here, son, he said as he pulled out a chair at the very end. We'll be starting soon, so don't wander off. I'm just going to say hi to the Wellers, and I'll be right back. He patted Frederick's shoulder before striding into the crowd with a hand in the air. Frederick looked around the room, hoping to see one of his cousins, but he couldn't spot any through the wall of people. He didn't recognize many of the guests, but he felt safe assuming that they were clients of the family business that Grandpa ran. Nearly everyone was middle-aged, so there were lots of husbands and wives, though there appeared to be more men than women. He was just noticing a pile of gifts forming in front of the table when his cousin Roland elbowed him in the shoulder. It's your first time at one of these, huh? 
he asked with a raise of his eyebrows and a nod toward the crowd in front of them. Yeah? Chuckled Frederick nervously. They barely let me come. Why is that? A light bulb clicked on Roland's face. Oh, right, because your birthday is next month. I remember because it's exactly one month before mine. That means you're still 12. Wow, this should be interesting for you. Roland was three years older than Frederick and seemingly twice that difference in inches. His hair was in tight, short braids that hung halfway to his eyebrows, and his gold-rimmed glasses matched the necklace he was wearing. Frederick scrunched his eyebrows and looked up at his cousin, who was still standing, and asked, What's that mean? Roland shook his head and laughed. I remember my first, he said, and then he used his hand to gesture an explosion on the upper side of his head while making a <laughs> sound. I've been to parties before, replied Frederick with as much suaveness as he could muster. Mm-hmm, hummed Roland with a wide smile. Just try to have fun. He slapped him on the back and disappeared into the crowd. Nervousness crept into Frederick's right leg, which was now bouncing rapidly under the table. He kept his cool from the waist up, though. He did not want to disappoint his father or embarrass his grandpa by drawing any attention away from him. Frederick desperately wanted to celebrate his grandpa's retirement, and the best way to do that was to be unseen. He tried to calm his bucking leg by further examining the room. It didn't take long to notice a distinct fashion trend. Everyone was wearing the same necklace that Roland was wearing. The pendant was a circle sitting under and touching the middle point of a downward facing horizontal arc that was almost straight, all in polished gold that was magnified by the dim yellow light from the chandeliers hanging overhead. Some of the guests had theirs hung on a silver chain that met each end of the arc while others had the chain neatly wrapped through the pendant like a snake. Frederick's nervousness turned into fear. His leg froze and he began breathing through his mouth as his eyes darted around the room in search of anyone not wearing the necklace like him. Why did everyone have the necklace except him? Was he supposed to have one? He couldn't remember seeing one on his dad and surely he would have told him if he needed to be wearing one. He could hear the pulse rushing in his ears and feel the sweat eking out of the pores of his forehead. He wanted to jump up and go looking for his dad, but he caught himself. He knew there was some explanation. There had to be. He continued scanning the room, trying to ignore his thoughts. Finally, he spotted his cousin, Tilly, who was only a few months older than him. She wasn't wearing one either. Okay, all good. It's probably just us new guys that don't have one. That makes sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense. His father appeared striding toward the table as the crowd behind him began to dissipate and settle into their seats. Frederick's eyes shot to his father's chest and confirmed that he wasn't wearing the necklace. A wave of relief washed over him, though his father reached the table before Frederick's pulse had fully normalized. Frederick admired that his father could clear so much ground with such a relaxed gait, moving so quickly yet so effortlessly. He sat in the chair beside Frederick and with a squeeze of his shoulder, leaned over and said something into his ear. Now comes the fun part. Hummed the speakers that Frederick couldn't see. He looked over to see his uncle Lonnie standing up and tapping the microphone as the lights dimmed everywhere except over their table. Evening all, I'm Lonnie, the baby. He waited a moment, glancing around the room for some recognition from the crowd that never came. I'd uh, uh, like, like to thank y'all for coming out tonight to celebrate my father's life and his many accomplishments, and for playing along that this was just a rocking chair convention. It was the only way we could get him out here, he shouted, turning to his father as the audience erupted into laughter. Frederick saw his grandpa shaking his head and laughing, so he chuckled to himself as well. Uncle Lonnie continued, but with the solemnity that matched his previous joviality. As you all know, Dad has decided to go on the cruise. 
He trailed off, eyes down. Silence filled the room like a gas. After some awkward silence, he found some of his original energy to say, but tonight we'll show him the worth of the life he's lived, the warmth he's shared, and the love of all the people that he's touched in this community, in this family. Tears pulled his eyes as he stepped away from the microphone to face his father while beginning to clap. The entire room immediately joining with cheers and hoops and hollers of Marty, 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 Marty's the goat. The deafening clapter continued well after his grandpa slowly stood up, hugged his son firmly, and positioned himself in front of the microphone. As they continued to clap, he just stood there smiling and blushing. He passed his gaze across the crowd and absorbed their cheers like a sunflower takes the sun. Fred was amazed and overjoyed to realize that someone as soft-spoken as his grandpa could summon such enthusiasm from so many people. His palm and fingertips were stinging by the time he, everyone decided in that hive mind way that the moment was done. Silence took the room again. much to me to see all of you here tonight. I can't come even to close to express my gratitude and my heart overflows. Spoke Martin in a voice so soft that were it not for the microphone, those sitting at the table would barely have heard it. But with the help of the speakers, his voice rang clearly throughout the hushed hall like spring rain on a tin roof. I thought I'd spent my life working with wood, sourcing it, processing it, transporting it, carving it. He held up a little cat that he pulled from his pants pocket and everyone looked upon it with awe. But looking around this room after it all, I see no trees or logs or plants or planks or anything like that surrounding me. I only see people, family, friends. It's what brought us here together, the timber. But it's never what's mattered, not really. It's always about this, he said as he gestured broadly around the room and his table, little wooden cat in hand. Connection, not business connections, but human connection. The blessings between us, the ultimate reward that comes from facing our greatest fear of trusting one another, of asking for help, of leaning on someone without knowing if they'll let you fall. In one way or many, I've leaned on each and every one of you who's here tonight. From muscle to fell trees, for sweat to run the mill, for brains to keep the books straight, for courage to stand up to me and keep the books honest, he paused while everyone laughed. For all the time you didn't get to spend with your husband, your wife, your son, daughter, brother, or sister, everything I have, I owe it all to you. He pulled a handkerchief out of his front pocket and dabbed his eyes. Now, before I get sentimental, he paused for a smaller laugh around the room. I'd like to have my grandson, Freddie, come up here for a moment. He turned to Frederick and waved for him to come over. Come on, I've got something to give you. Frederick's eyes went wide and his body stiffened. This entire time he'd been trying to remain unseen, but now that everyone in the room was looking directly at him, he had no idea why. He looked to his dad who offered a reassuring smile and said, well, go on. With a small jerk of his head toward his father, Frederick clumsily slid his chair back and walked what felt like a mile over four steps to his grandpa. 
He had never seen him so tall, having spent most of their time together sitting in rocking chairs. His face looked like it had been sculpted from gold under the dimmed yellow lights. With a smile, he reached behind his neck and lifted a gleaming necklace over his head and lowered it over Frederick's. This belonged to my grandfather, and now it belongs to you, he said privately to Frederick. He bent over and touched his forehead to Frederick's with his hand on the back of his head. Now the sun will never set without you, Freddy boy. He stood straight and put a hand on each of Frederick's shoulders and said, All right, now get back to your seat, Sonny. With two pats on the shoulders, Frederick was turned by his grandpa's strong but gentle hands before his own legs started to work to carry him back to his seat. When he arrived at his seat, he found his father straightening his own necklace that he had just put on. Didn't want you asking questions to ruin the surprise, he whispered to Frederick, leaning only slightly towards him and giving him a quick squeeze on the thigh beneath the table. Frederick's thoughts swirled around in his head, gaining speed but losing clarity. His heart was pounding, so much so that he could barely hear his uncle's voice ringing through the speakers again. He caught something about buffet tables and gifts, but he could only think about the necklace now hanging low on his chest. What did his grandpa mean? Will he get another necklace for himself? What's this all about? Those were the only thoughts that he could fully form. More obscure fears raced around the edge of his mind that he couldn't pin down. His father was standing now. He bent down and said something to Frederick before striding off. Frederick didn't hear exactly what he said, but he gathered it was about gifts and grandpa. It broke him from the trance he'd been in, having been gazing down at the necklace the whole time until his uncle started talking. Looking up, he saw the room lights were bright again and that lines were forming around the buffet tables. Come on, Come on. let's grab some grub, came his cousin's voice beside him. Roland filled his plate with every meat he came across piling up sides right on top as if he forgot they existed until he came upon them. Frederick didn't understand how his cousin could have had so much of an appetite with so many unanswered questions. Maybe those questions weren't unanswered to him. He put a couple of pieces of ham and some mac and cheese on his plate and followed his cousin back to their table where Roland sat in the place where his father had been sitting. As Frederick took his seat, he saw that his father was now in front of the table handling guests and gifts with Grandpa. A table beside them was slowly filling with unwrapped gifts, a silver watch, an engraved letter opener, diamond set cufflinks, and many more that Frederick couldn't see. While most were content letting the guest of honor open their gifts while they ate at their tables, some came over to personally deliver theirs from the pile which is when Frederick's father would step in to both locate their gift amongst the pile and entertain them with conversation during the process. Oh, this red one, chirped his father inquisitively after lifting a third red wrapped gift. Yes, that one, called the smiling man standing at the periphery of the table. He received the gift from Frederick's father with laughter between them, and then he turned to his grandpa and handed it to him. His grandpa said something that Frederick couldn't hear. The man nodded and his grandpa unwrapped the red gift. It was about the size of a thick book, but after the paper was removed, Frederick could see that it was a wooden box with gold lettering on the top. Remington. His grandpa smiled with a nod before shaking the man's hand. That'll come in, that'll come in handy. Choked Roland before gulping down a mouthful of whipped potatoes. What? Frederick's brows were pushed together. On the cruise, a piece like that'll be useful, replied Roland, pointing at the wooden box with his fork. Cruise? What? What is this cruise? Frederick said the word as if he had never spoken it before. You heard my dad. That's what this is all about, said Roland as he drew circles in the air with his fork aimed upward. 
This is a retirement party. What's that got to do with the cruise? Frederick was getting more and more confused with every question he asked. This is just the pregame, said Roland coolly. The real party happens on the cruise where we can't go. Only Grandpa. Well, him and the other loaded retirees, though I've heard some poor old geezers are actually paid to go. His voice lifting in hopeful amusement. What are you talking about? Why can't we go? Demanded Frederick while keeping his voice low. It's a sunset cruise. Roland flicked a finger under Frederick's new necklace, making it pop and then swing back onto his chest with a thud. What's a sunset cruise? His voice wavered as he looked down at his necklace. It's a cruise for people like Grandpa who want to go out in style. He's not one to waste away in a hospital bed, you know. Roland took a massive bite of cornbread. A hospital bed? Grandpa's not sick. Frederick could feel his pulse increasing. One moment, one moment, mumbled Roland through the cornbread before swallowing. But he's 87 and already survived cancer once, Freddie. He's already beating the odds. Odds? What against? He's fine. You don't know what you're talking about, snapped Frederick. Roland looked down and stared at his plate into nothing. I watched our groundskeeper turn into a husk over six months thanks to bone cancer, and he was only 55. But you're right, Grandpa is fine, but that's how he wants to be remembered. Roland said this with more softness in his voice. Remembered. Frederick froze. He wants to be, he wants us to remember him as the strong, confident man that he is, not the feeble man that he would become. Would? Feeble, stuttered Frederick. What's to remember? Anyone can see he's healthy as a horse. Look at him. Frederick pointed at his grandfather, who was bent over amongst a small circle of men. Bent over not in agony, but in a fit of laughter. But that's the thing, Freddy. Roland rubbed his forehead. We won't be seeing any more of Grandpa. Not after tonight. Frederick could not speak. He could only try unsuccessfully to swallow the lump in his throat that was growing bigger and darker. Roland continued resolutely. The sunset cruise isn't one you come back from. People only go to die. No way! Frederick finally made his mouth work, but he could barely understand the words coming out. They didn't feel like his own, and they came out faster than he could think them. Grandpa wouldn't do that. What do they do? They just drive around in circles till everyone dies of old age? He could do that here. Now, Roland, you lying. You're always pranking me, and this is not funny. The words flew out of him defiantly. Roland sighed. I'm not pranking you, cousin, and you're only half right. They do go around in circles, but they aren't waiting for Mother Nature to take her course. That would cost too much, and they got time for that. Plus, the entire point is to give a big middle finger to Mother Nature by going out on your own terms. So, it's basically nonstop parties that get wilder and crazier every night. It's a bunch of old people, so it doesn't really take much to cause a heart attack or aneurysm or whatever the hell else old people die of when they get too excited. Half of them are there because they've already been diagnosed with brain cancer or they're on their last leg somehow. But, Whoever survives each night gets to enjoy even bigger and bigger parties, more booze and better drugs the next day. I hear that's how most go out, is on the pills. Gives you the most certainty of a painless death. Frederick stared in horror at his cousin. Roland continued. Of course, there's some people that don't get killed by the drugs. Their heart or their mind is just too strong. People like our grandpa, I imagine. And after enough weeks when there's only a few stubborn ones left, well, they are in private waters. Something about that pulled Frederick out of his frozen silence, enough to get out one word. So? So anything goes, said Roland flatly. Frederick's gaze shot to the wooden box. Yep, total free for all. But that would mean there could only be one left, whimpered Frederick as if some simple math could save his grandpa from his terror. 
you're right. And I have no idea what happens then. All I know is that no passengers return from the Sunset Cruise. Only the crew. Roland sat quietly for a moment before saying, I'm going to go get some more brisket. Want anything? Frederick sat dumbfounded. So Roland slapped him on the back and walked over to the buffet tables. Frederick was left reeling with thoughts, trying to determine if he could trust his cousin at all, while simultaneously trying to make sense of everything that he said. Would Grandpa do that? Could Grandpa do that? He's so healthy. He's got so many years left. He wouldn't choose to leave us like that. His hands are for carving, not for... He would certainly never shoot. He couldn't even think of the words. Thinking makes them real. Tears filled the bottom of his eyelids, waiting for him to blink on their way down his cheeks. He stood abruptly when he saw his father standing over him. Frederick began to ask, is it true? But his father put his hands down on his hands on the son's shoulders, meeting his twinkling eyes with his own, sparkling like chandeliers, and nodded slowly with a warm smile before Frederick could get it out. Come on, son. Let's go say bye to Grandpa.